Well, hey everybody, this is Robert and welcome to today's show. And again, like I did yesterday, I want to do another educational video. And I'm going to look at some other flagellates, but these are some of the intestinal flagellates. And I also want to look at Trichomonas vaginalis, um, which is a flagellate, and the one pathogenic ciliate to humans, Valentidium coli. So let's go ahead and take a look. And the first intestinal flagellate I want to talk about is, of course, Giardia lamblia. And this is something that is found on surfaces or in the soil, food or water, that has been contaminated with feces from infected humans or animals. Uh, Giardia is the most common intestinal parasitic disease affecting humans in the United States. People become infected with Giardia by swallowing the infective stage, which are the cysts. Uh, the pathology uh, can be weight loss, failure to absorb fat, lactose, vitamin A, and vitamin B12. And it's known that IgA deficient people seem to be more susceptible to Giardia infections. Uh, the cysts, are, they are oval to ellipsoid. Um, you can usually see the two to four nuclei depending on how mature it is. And an exostyle down the middle. You can see those right there. Uh, it's the cyst stage, so it's non-modal, and it's the infective stage. And you can see the size there. It's a rather small uh, parasite. And there's another picture here. And you can see the exostyle right here. One. Uh, Giardia trophs, very characteristic, but they are pear-shaped. Uh, they measure up to 20 micrometers in length. This is the only bilaterally symmetrical protozoa there is. So if, you, if I was to cut this trophozoa long ways in half, it would be identical on both sides. Two large nuclei, eight flagella, median bodies, a large sucking disc on the uh, bottom. And if you see it in a fresh stool, you will see a falling leaf motility. And there's some more. Here's a whole bunch of Giardias in this picture right here. But they, this is pretty clear right here. Um, Chylomastix mesnili, considered a non-pathogenic uh, protozoan. Uh, however, finding this, like the non-pathogenic amoebas that we talked about months ago in another video, um, it's important because it's an indicator of fecal contamination of a food or water source. Um, in presence of the cyst and or the trophs are both diagnostic and of course the cyst is the infective stage. And, it's, and this is also quite characteristic in the cyst stage. It's lemon shaped and as you can see here it has kind of like that nipple at one end and inside you have a safety pin shaped cytostome. So very characteristic, not hard to identify this at all. It is kind of tiny though. Um, the trophozoi, more pear-shaped, uh, anterior end contains a large uh, single nucleus in the eccentric karyosome, and the posterior end tapers off uh, to a point. Dientamoeba fragilis, uh, hence the name dientamoeba. You would think it would be an amoeba, but it's not. It is a flagellate. And historically, it's known only from the trophozoite stage in stools. There's no known cyst stage. Um, the transmission is probably fecal oral. Um, it's also been seen in photographs where you can see it tagging along with like a pinworm egg. You can find those uh, photographs uh, online. And hence the name fragilis. It is a fragile parasite in uh, experts believe it cannot live very long in the environment after it's passed from the feces. Uh, this flagellate has to be differentiated more difficultly, more difficult from the non-pathogenic amoebas. You're not going to see a flagella, so it's going to look kind of like an amoeba. Um, and it's diant amoeba, so it's characteristically it would have two um, nuclei which are broken up um, with the chromatin broken up into like four to five, six pieces, um, the karyosome. And um, sometimes you only see one nuclei, so that's also possible. 
and it's a lot easier to see in a, say, a trichrome stain than to see it in a wet prep. Trichomonas hominis, uh, now it's known as pentatrichomonas hominis, and this is a non-pathogenic flagellate with no cyst stage. It's pear-shaped, five flagella, four at the uh, rounded, larger anterior end, one at the posterior end, uh, undulating membrane, and uh, a single nucleus up near that tuft of flagella at the anterior end. Its morphology appears jerky on a uh, wet prep. Trichomonas vaginalis. Um, now we're getting away from the intestinal uh, pr um, flagellates, and we're going to talk about Trichomonas vaginalis, which is a very common, one of the most common um, STDs in the United States. Um, it's more commonly seen in women than men. The symptoms are pretty uh, characteristic. You have that yellow-green, frothy, foul-smelling discharge, burning during urination, strawberry cervix. Uh, like a lot of STDs, uh, many of these cases are asymptomatic. There is no cyst stage, so it's very easy to see in a um, wet prep from the um, female genital tract. Oftentimes you can even find it in urinalysis samples. And morphologically it looks very similar to what we just talked about, uh, trichomonas hominis or pentatrichomonas hominis. And here's the life cycle. And basically it's just through sexual intercourse, ping-ponging ping back and forth. Um, a lot of times you see that where one person may have it uh, of a couple and um, it gets ping pong back and forth. One gets treated and the other one doesn't. So it just seems to go back and forth. It's a pear-shaped uh, uh, trophozoite. Again, five flagella, like uh, its relative Trichomonas hominis. Four at the anterior rounded end, a large um, nucleus, and one flagella at the posterior end. And lastly, I want to talk about the one pathogenic ciliate uh, to humans, and that's Valentidium coli. Um, the animal reservoir for this parasite is our pigs, our swine. Um, human infections occur more frequently in areas where pigs are raised, especially if good hygiene is not practiced. It's transmitted through the fecal-oral route, um, and like other most other protozoa, it's through the infective cyst. Now, it's a very this is a very serious pathogen, although it's rare in the U.S. It is a very serious pathogen, with symptoms that, in a lot of ways, resemble like Entamoeba histolytica. Uh, people who are immunocompromised are most likely to experience the more severe signs and symptoms: uh, persistent diarrhea, dysentery, uh, abdominal pain, weight loss, vomiting. Preferation of the colon if it's left untreated, um, hemorrhage, lesions. So it can be a very serious pathogen. And that's just the life cycle. Like much of the protozoa we have talked about, um, it's quite a simple life cycle. Uh, the morphology, um, both the troph or the cyst can be found in the stool. And these are very large parasites, so they're really, really hard to miss. Um, up to 70 microns in size. Uh, refractive double wall enclosing the cilia. And a kidney bean shaped macronucleus, which is kind of hard to see in this particular uh, picture. And a smaller, less conspicuous micronucleus. Now in the trophozoite, this is incredibly large. This can be up to 200 microns. And it's really easy to see the cilia. That's its means of motility going around it. Um, it has, here's the large kidney bean shaped macronucleus and the micronucleus, I cannot see that well, so I won't try to point it out, but yeah, you, you can't miss it. And like I said, this is the only pathogenic cilia, uh, to human beings. And that's it. There's a nice quickie. Um, but, uh, today we went over the pathogenic and not pathogenic uh, intestinal flagellates that you may see in a human sample. Uh, we looked at 
Trichomonas vaginalis, which is a uh, very, very common sexually transmitted disease and the only pathogenic ciliate to humans, Ballantidium coli. Well, I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time on Outbreak News TV. Don't forget to subscribe.